Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we actually implemented a little bit of deep linking here so we can force our user or, or hoist our user into this details page inside of our app. And we did so here inside the nav graph by defining a particular deep link tag on the detail fragment. And now when the user clicks a link that follows this format, we extract out the character ID we properly restore the back stack or create the back stack and we put them inside of this screen that loads properly. If you missed it, I'll put a card in the top right so you can check it out. And in today's episode, I want to talk about the drawer layout. It is a very popular top level navigation UI element, I guess. And the Jetpack navigation library has some pretty good integration with it. So flipping over to the documentation here, which I will link in the description of the video, there is a little bit of a write-up here about implementing a drawer layout and if you don't know what it is it is this little window that kind of flies out from the left side of your screen allowing the user to select any of these different options and then that usually will navigate them to a different a different fragment inside the application to you know provide them a, a sound way to navigate around scrolling down here we can see a little bit of the layout that they've defined in this example here so i'm just going to go ahead and copy a bunch of this and do this or bring it into our layout. And so inside of our activity at the moment or our activities layout, we just have a constraint layout and the fragment container view. Now if we go ahead and flip back, they have a drawer layout, which has two children, a fragment container view and the navigation view. So we're just going to quickly take these, like I said, and bring them into here. I'm going to go ahead and change this out here to be the all right, I guess it's not playing nicely here, but we'll just copy that and put that in place. Um, and then at this point here, it looks like nothing's freaking out. We're gonna leave our container view alone, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the navigation view. And then this is the actual view that flies out uh, that we see there, or that we saw in this uh, little example here. So full disclosure, I haven't really implemented one of these in a while, so we're gonna kind of go through this together. Uh, it should be pretty smooth sailing, but just in case things are a little jumpy from point A to point B, uh, I'll do my best to make it clear. Uh, but okay, we have our drawer layout. We can go ahead and connect it up to our app bar configuration, which we do have. And it's quite simple here in the app bar configuration. We can not only hold the nav graph, but there's also the drawer layout instance or that we can connect to. And then inside of the activity here, we just basically run this code. So I'm just going to copy it. We'll modify it in our activity but we have the nav graph activity here. It looks quite similar to this here. So we already have our nav host fragment defined. We already have a nav controller. And then it just seems like here, the navigation view is being called setup with nav controller with our nav controller. So we can import our little uh, navigation view and then this as well. And things seem to be working properly. That's already defined as the nav view with the ID. And then we set up with the controller inside of here, as we remember, the nav graph uh, or the app bar configuration, excuse me, has another parameter that it's going to accept, which is going to be the uh, nav view here, which we will just go ahead and set to be that. And then we will set the nav view inside of there. Oh, is it not like that? What's going on? Oh, the drawer layout, excuse me. So what is that, the root? Yes. Drawer layout, and then we will just set the drawer layout in there. Okay, and so that uh, seems to be everything at the moment that we've defined here. So let's, uh, let's just give this a run and see where we ended up, right? At the moment, we just have a regular old fragment here, a top level fragment, doesn't have a back arrow, doesn't have anything, um, and that's about it. But we'll see what it looks like after this little configuration here. And so reloading the application here, we see basically everything as is, except there is a little drawer icon here. And if we click it, nothing happens at the moment. Uh, then we can click away and it kind of goes backwards. We can drag it back and we get a nice little that background is kind of animating back in so it doesn't look like anything is covering it. And then I guess navigation works the same. 
Now that was quite nice. Did we see that? This little back arrow just happened, so we can click that to go backwards. It actually animates right out of the box. So there actually is an understanding that this is a top level fragment and then this is not a top level fragment. So that's pretty sweet that that just started working. However, we don't have anything inside of this drawer layout and we need to fix that here. So the idea is, if we flip back to the, nav uh, to the documentation here, that there are, in this example, there are four different locations that we can navigate to. And essentially those four different items are going to exist inside of a menu and each one of those items are going to map directly to a fragment that we have defined inside of our nav graph. And so basically by the user selecting one of these particular items, they are basically creating an action and moving, navigating from one fragment to the next under the hood, all connected up with the library. Yeah, it's really quite that simple. So they don't talk much about the menu here. Uh, they actually don't even have a menu here. As you can see, there is uh, nothing in that. But I think I know what we need here. So if we just look for app menu, yep, we can go ahead and now define our menu. So if we open up our project view here, we're going to go inside of the resource folder here. We don't have one yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create the resource directory for a menu. Just start typing it out and it, and it uh, kind of comes up there. Then we're going to right click on the menu here and we're going to build a menu resource file. I always like to start them with menu underscore just so, I don't know, to be verbose. And so let's say menu uh, drawer layout. All right. And so these menus are built exactly like if you were to add a menu or an options menu to a fragment. Uh, there are a few other attributes that we can add into it because it's in a drawer layout, but they do basically operate the same here where we can add in a particular item. And now this ID is quite important because this can't just be any old ID here. This needs to be a very particular ID. And so we're going to build the menu item for the screen that we are currently looking at here. Uh, this, this, this screen here. So if we take a look at our nav graph, that fragment is the character list fragment. Uh, we've defined it as our start destination and that points to the character list fragment inside of our code. So if we actually copy this ID here, uh, we can go ahead and paste that in right here. And now, uh, let's say all characters as the title. Yeah, 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 it's going to want me to put it in a string resource, but uh, it's not the end of the world here. Uh, okay, so now basically there should be an option here, as you can see, that says all characters, and that would point us to the character list fragment that we have defined so far. Flipping back to our navigation view, we just need to add in this menu, menu underscore drawer underscore layout. Then if we go ahead and rerun things, we should see something inside of this menu instead of just a blank uh, panel that kind of comes out here. And so we are rebuilding here. The fragment is loading in, everything is all good. And when we click on it, we see the all characters option here. Uh, it actually seems like we do navigate again to it. So we can see if we can clean that up a little bit. I wonder how the back stack works if I go backwards. All right, so we do exit the app. So that is interesting. It's not really adding them all to the back stack, but it's kind of refreshing it, uh, which is interesting. But point being, we have an item here, and when we select it, we move ourselves to a particular fragment. Now, just for, I guess, example here, we're going to build this uh, menu out a little bit. And instead of the character list fragment, let's go with uh, episode list fragment. We can say all episodes here, episodes, we can spell it. Yep, spelled it right. Uh, and we don't have this defined yet, but we're going to flip over to our nav graph and we're going to basically create another fragment here. Um, I guess we could basically copy this because it's going to mimic it pretty, pretty substantially. Uh, we're going to comment out this action here. We're going to change this list to be the, I cannot spell the word episode. Okay, the episode list fragment. We need to change this around. Uh, we need to give it a layout and the label here is going to be instead of Rick and Morty, uh, characters, it's going to be episodes. So where are we? Okay, so we can see this other little option here. Uh, let me do some cleanup here and get this in a stable state, I guess.
Okay, everybody, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with me if you made it this far. So what we've done here so far is just created inside of our nav graph another fragment. We've given it the ID of episode list. We've given it the episode list fragment that I've just recently created, a new label here, and a new layout that we also have just created. Uh, as we can see here in the nav graph, we now have our characters list fragment. We have our character detail fragment. We have our episode list fragment sitting here. And so these are basically going to be sibling fragments, right, that are both top level. You can't necessarily, you know, navigate into one from the other. You kind of just switch between them. Uh, so this is a pretty popular navigation tactic with inside of your app. And if you can imagine Instagram, right, there's all the five different buttons at the bottom that you can select and you navigate to a different page uh, that all kind of are their own top level hierarchy with, within what you can do within those pages. So anyway, um, we have inside the layout here, just kind of copied it. We're going to eventually use a recycler view, but for now we're just going to put a text view in there uh, just to show that we are at that particular fragment. We've gone ahead and no, we don't need that. Uh, again, this ID here, episode list fragment matches the episode list fragment, the ID here for this particular definition inside of our nav graph. And then the fragment itself here, there's one other thing that I just want to talk about. You can pass in the layout ID, the resource ID to the constructor of the fragment. And then that basically is just the default layout that they're going to try to inflate inside of on create view. So the only one that we need to override at this point is the on view created. And we can hook our binding up here by simply calling the static function bind, passing in the view that was passed in to this callback here, and then the view binding works like it normally would here. Always remember to null it out in on destroy view to prevent memory leaks. And I think that's about it for right now, right? So uh, if we go ahead and run this again, I'll just see here. Yeah, okay, so all characters, all episodes. Flipping back here, waiting for it to rebuild, and we are up and running. So we do have our regular fragment loading in. When we go ahead and click this little drawer layout, we now have the all characters, the all episodes, and if we click all episodes, we get a nice runtime issue. So let's check this out here. Okay, so after Googling around a little bit, it seems like it had something to do with context or maybe a little bit of a life cycle issue. Not entirely certain of it, but it was crashing on this line here which was previously defined uh, like so, where we were in immediately setting the val to be equal to the binding asserting non-null, and we were getting a null pointer at that moment. So something funky was going on there, but the Kotlin syntax coming to the rescue here, we can just delegate the initialization of this variable to the first time that we are using it, which wouldn't happen until after the on view created, so we are all good. Anyway, flipping back to our application here, if we click on the drawer layout, we have multiple options. And if we click on all episodes, we clearly navigate to a new fragment. We see the title up here has been updated. Again, that matches this label that we've defined here inside of the fragment declaration in our nav graph. And all of this navigation is happening simply because of the connection that we have between the menu items having the same IDs here as the nav graph IDs here that are defined, these little fragment uh, elements inside the nav graph. So that's really all there is to it. But as we can see, one little thing to clean up here is that there is a back arrow. So although, as I was talking about before, these two fragments don't have any real connectivity, right? They're not supposed to be able to, you know, one is the parent of the other or anything along those lines. The current architecture of this navigation makes that unfortunately true. So we can tweak the app bar configuration, which exists here, and that will go away. If we take a look at the different constructors that exist here, we can use one that has the top level um, destinations here, and define the define them as a set of the particular IDs. And I believe this is the character list fragment r.id 
other episode list fragment. And then let's see, what else do we need in here? Uh, the drawer layout is going to be equal to the drawer layout there. And so at this point, our app bar configuration now has the understanding that these two different IDs of these particular fragments are the top level destinations. So if we go ahead, we don't really have to change anything else here. We just need to rerun the application with that code up and running. And again, everything works as normal, but when we select a particular option here, like all episodes, we see that this little hamburger still stays the same because it understands now that both of these fragments are top level, that they don't necessarily need to be able to go back. And if we open this again, we see the all episodes one is selected and the all characters is available there. So if we go ahead and click on the all characters and then we click on Morty Smith here, we see that little back arrow happening, the little animation, which is just super nice that it works right out of the bat. I'm absolutely loving how this UI and this navigation is coming together. Uh, but again, that's because this is the character details fragment and they are not defined or that ID is not defined inside of this set of the top level destinations here. So if we were to add, you know, four other options to this list, as long as we add the um, IDs of those fragments into this top level destination set, the expected behavior will just come right out of the box for us. So this is where I'm going to leave it. We have a blank fragment here. We're going to go ahead and hit the API for some episodes information. It works somewhat similar to the characters information where it can be paged and it gets back a whole bunch of characters and some other information about each episode. So I'm quite excited to kind of spin up a little bit more networking there and continue to build out this application here, which I do have the intentions of publishing to the Google Play Store. So with that in mind, please do subscribe if you notice you are not already. There will be plenty of more content coming out around this application here. And if you are enjoying it so far, I don't want you to miss out on what's to come. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like in the video. It'll help the content out, get it, get it out to more people, and it'll help my channel out as I try to grow this. So I hope you all have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.